Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Hunter and I am the field CTO at Ninja One. Today we'll be looking at endpoint management on the Ninja One platform. Logging into Ninja One, we see the main dashboard, which provides an immediate view of the overall status of our environment via the device health tile in the center of the dashboard. Easily see which devices require attention from issues like failed or pending patches, threats detected by integrated antivirus and EDR products, customizable alerts, and more. The dedicated operating system patching dashboard provides a variety of patching metrics that show key information, like devices with outstanding patches, the devices with many outstanding patches, and in the middle of the screen a tile where failed patches and pending patches that require approval can be found. We can click through to see the reason why a patch failed and remediate, or in the case of pending patches, click through to see the patches that require approval and either approve or reject them. CVSS scores and CVEs addressed by the patch in question, as well as links to Microsoft's KB article, are all accessible when approving patches. Software application patching also resides in the patching menu, with access to the same pending, approved, rejected, and failed workflow that we just saw for operating system patching. You can also view installed software via the Software tab, with the added ability to initiate quiet uninstalls on Windows devices. Other dashboards include the Backup dashboard, which is reserved for Ninja One Backup and displays usage in addition to recent backup history. Ninja One Backup supports file and folder backup for both Windows and Mac OS, and full image backup for Windows. The Activities dashboard shows all Ninja One logs, including actions Ninja One has taken like running scripts or installing patches. We've seen some of what Ninja One is capable of, but how would this get set up? Ninja One is agent-based, and new installers can be generated in the top right via the plus sign. After generating your installer, you can deploy using your current application installation tool, or for on-premise Active Directory environments, you can install the agent on the domain controller and push to specified OU paths via the Ninja One console. Once installed, the device only needs to be online and connected to the internet, and it can be managed from practically anywhere in the world. Now that the agent is installed, how is the device going to be managed? Within Ninja One, common settings are managed by a device's policy. A policy includes conditions that generate alerts, scheduled automations, patching settings for both operating systems and third-party applications, and deployment of integrated antivirus. Alerts in Ninja One are generated by conditions. You can use templated conditions that are pre-made, like this one that tracks the event ID for failed login attempts, or create your own customizable alerts based off a variety of different metrics, like the status of antivirus on the device, an outstanding patch with a high CVSS score, or a failing battery on a laptop. Here's an example of a condition that monitors a critical service, in this case the print spooler. When the service has been down for a defined period of time, an alert will trigger. Any condition can respond to an alert with an automation. In this case, the out-of-the-box script to start a Windows service would allow us to self-remediate the issue. The critical third step here is resetting the alert if the script is successful, which is determined by the When No Longer Met checkbox. Conditions can also generate tickets in Ninja One ticketing, an integrated PSA, or any third-party service that can accept emails or webhooks. Operating system patch management is based on two distinct schedules, the scan schedule, which identifies outstanding patches, and the update schedule, which does the downloading and installing of whichever patches have been approved. Categories of patches have three different levels of approval. Patches can either be pre-approved for deployment on the next update schedule, or time delayed up to 30 days to allow a grace period before installing. Other categories of patches, like optional patches, are typically pre-rejected to ensure they are not mistakenly installed. For additional oversight, some patches, for example drivers or feature updates, might be set to require a manual level of approval from a technician before deployment, which we saw earlier on the dashboard. After the update schedule installs the patches, a reboot will typically be required. Ninja One will place an indicator to identify devices that require a reboot as the result of patching, but the reboot options inside policies can help facilitate this by prompting the end user to reboot or automatically rebooting. The software menu on the left is for third-party software application patching, and the overall workflow is almost identical to operating system patching. There's an additional tab where the software you wish to be patched can be selected. In addition to selecting software and setting patch approval settings, there's also an option to install the full version of the application if it's missing. 
While this isn't available for every application, there are separate ways to install applications that we'll talk about right now. Leaving policies and navigating to the automation library, we'll see options to create new scripts or import scripts from either your own computer or from the template library, which contains scripts created by Ninja One engineers intended to address common issues in the IT space. Ninja One supports Batch, PowerShell, VBScript, JavaScript, and ShellScript as languages. Ninja One also supports uploading application installers for deployment with the ability to include helper files and pre-post scripts for an all-inclusive automation. At the top of the screen is the global search bar, which allows quick searches for a variety of criteria. There's a handy play button for quick actions on devices, like initiating scripts, reboots, patch cycles, or remote access sessions. Clicking on the device takes us to the device level, where we can see hardware performance metrics on the left, and in the center, general device information, like device model, serial number, or the current idle time. Below, we'll see a list of any current running actions or device health indicators. The right side will contain recent device activities. A tab allows for device notes to be added to a feed visible to all technicians. Near the top, we have a device quick bar that allows the device to be favorited the familiar play button to take action, and a remote CLI icon to activate a completely silent terminal session. Remote access sessions are also initiated via a dedicated icon. Let's start a remote access session using Ninja One Remote. Once the session is initiated, a variety of options are available at the top of the screen for sending different keystroke combinations, starting file transfers, pasting from the clipboard, or printing a document from a remote PC to your local printer. If a machine has multiple monitors, displays can be cycled through or displayed all at once. If there are multiple user sessions active on a device, you can select the user whose session you would like to see. Branding will be displayed, indicating that someone is remoted into the machine and technicians can start a chat to correspond with the end user. As an alternative to taking over a user's computer with a screen share session, the Tools tab contains several valuable ways to work silently in the background without disrupting the end user, like remote registry modifications, file transfers, and on domain controllers, Active Directory user management. Now that we've seen the individual device level, let's zoom out to the Devices menu, which is accessible via the left side navbar. The Devices menu allows for bulk actions to be taken on groups of devices. You can select multiple machines and run automations, patch cycles, or additional configuration options like which policy is assigned to the device, or a task that will run across all selected machines. The filters at the top allow for devices with common criteria to be displayed, and combinations of the filters used can be saved as a device group. This allows for quick loading of the group whenever needed, and the dynamic nature of the group means only endpoints that currently meet the search parameters will be visible. For example, if using the up filter indicating an online device, any offline device would automatically be excluded from appearing within that group. You can target automations across the groups that you created, allowing you to have a set it and forget it workflow. For example, I might create a device group that looks at all Windows workstations that are online and do not have Google Chrome installed. I can then create a task which looks at that group on a recurring schedule and runs an automation to install Google Chrome. Ninja One does the heavy lifting of identifying which devices have Chrome installed and automatically removes those endpoints from the device group. The columns visible on the devices menu are customizable, so you can see the data relevant to your search. And the visible columns are saved along with the filters at the top, so the group not only filters for the endpoints you want to see, but the pertinent information is easily visible as well. Ninja One reporting is based off of two different types of reports data table reports in a CSV format that can be created based off the device groups we just mentioned, and summary reports, which provide a more visual display of information like patch compliance, asset inventory, or just a general overview of device status. Ninja One allows for two main types of users, technicians and end users. Technicians can have an array of permissions from full access as a system administrator, or extremely limited to only see certain devices with the ability to only take certain actions. End users receive a much more basic view of Ninja One, intended to allow remote access to specified machines, ticket submission and management, and self-service backup restoration. Although we've been looking at the generic portal of Ninja One so far, you can create a branded portal with a custom URL and logos. A brandable SysTray icon can also be created, which allows menu options to be given to the end user for submitting tickets, accessing quick links, 
or even finding information on proper help desk procedures. And for technicians within Ninja One, help is easily accessible via the question mark in the top right. Submit a help desk ticket with Ninja One's industry leading support team, read up on recent release notes, or browse the dojo which holds our knowledge base plus the community form. This has been a brief overview of endpoint management on the Ninja One platform. If you have any questions or would like to talk, please feel free to reach out. Take care.